Okay, so I'm recording, yeah. So is it possible to use the observer to transcend food addiction? No, uh, yes, you can use the observer. I mean, I have used it. And in fact, um, it, it, you know, when you use the observer on anything, it is in my experience of all the spiritual tools I, I, I share and I practice myself, it is the most advanced of all of them. I mean, advance is a funny word. It's the one that brings the most spectacular miracles in an instant, no matter what the situation is. Where the other ones I tend to do, feel the feelings, cancelling beliefs, tend to take time to reach an effect. The observer, when I do it, is like it's a split second and the problem disappears. So it is like phenomenal. My experience of sharing it with others for uh, well over a decade is that some people aren't able to do it and some people don't like doing it and some people can't easily get the experience or can't get the experience of the observer. So if I say like, oh, I'm just thinking about this over and over again, I said, we'll go to the observer of your thoughts. I do have someone I'm working with in a 12-step fellowship and I do sort of mention he, he likes the observer and he feels drawn to it. It's like uh, with him, uh, I, love, I love helping him with anything. He goes, oh yeah. Are you thinking about this problem? He goes, yeah. And then I say, do you want to do the observer on it? And he says, yeah, okay, get, let's do the observer on it. So I'll say, okay, um, can you be the observer of your thoughts? And usually he's so good at it, he'll go to the, he'll, he'll be the pure observing of the thoughts. I say, are these thoughts anything to do with you? Do they, do they have any effect on you? He'll say no. And, and they'll just disappear. So in the observer, it's like there's, the, the observer has no interest in the story of these thoughts and they disappear in a split second also he'll get feelings you know sort of like cravings or whatever so you want to do the observer on that craving he goes all right so I'll go yeah, so there's a craving now you experience is that right and you'll go yes can you be the observer of that the detached observer of that craving and then go oh yeah I can he goes they're craving now he'll usually go no or it seems to have just got, gone down in intensity and it's not really uh, bothering him so it's like, so it does show that when you can go to the, you might go to what's called the interested or attached or identified observer, where it seems there's some distance, but it's still having an effect. So that's not the pure observer. Then you can, can you go to the observer of that observer, which is not identifying or hooking to it at all. And then if you go to the pure observer, then it totally disappears from your consciousness. If there was intensity, it's disappeared. If there were thoughts, they just vanished. Uh, but sometimes you can go to intermediate observers where it seems they lower in intensity, but there's still some uh, mixing in with identification with your internal environment and the external environment, whether it be a feeling or a story or thoughts. Um, now, food, food addiction. I think uh, generally, you know, I mean, I do help people with food in, in, a, in a certain fellowship, which won't be mentioned, but um, I don't usually do it with people. Uh, uh, with food because usually they can't do it because they haven't done enough spiritual work to be able to access a food craving and the observer. I've done it in the most extraordinary, all kinds of situations, cravings, uh, people, places, situations, physical illnesses. And when I go to the pure observer, it just disappears, whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. If you are able to do the observer of cravings, okay, so who, you know, like when there's a food craving, there's like a feeling that, for example, you want a donut if it's food there's suddenly this urge that you want the, uh, the thing of the donut and there's a thinking, there's a, there's a thought that suddenly pops into mind. Eat donuts now, it could be that or something like that. Eat donuts now and there's this, this intense craving uh, they, and, uh, for, for the fridge or a donut or something. So that is, so there's an aspect which is the thoughts or the head and there's an aspect which is the feeling. So the feeling is not, is actually an object. So this is how I, I do it with one of my fellows, um, or I do it myself. Well, let's get clear on what, how the feeling is being experienced. Is it in my is it in my stomach? Uh, is it like, or is it does it feel feel like a rumbling tummy and the stomach's this big, and the feeling feels like this? So, oh yeah, it's like a football in my stomach that seems to be an energy ball. Okay, now I get the sense of this object like a balloon. Okay, now can I be the detached observer of that balloon? And if I do do that, it'll, it'll pop, it'll disappear because the detached observer is not interested in feelings in the stomach, they just disappear. And you'll find that even if you go back to your ego, 
it's disappeared completely. It just busts the illusion of that identification with the thing. Now, if this thoughts, I just, uh, if I don't eat a donut very quickly, I'll die. If I don't eat a donut very quickly, I'll die. Well, if that's going on, that's like your mental energy in your head, isn't it really? It's located in your head. It's like a thought, a repeating thought, an incessant thought or an obsession. Okay, but you're aware of thought. I mean, thoughts, if you've been the observer of thoughts, go to the observer of all this, th all this thinking. So be the detached observer of the thinking. And when you're the detached observer of the thinking, the thinking will disappear because thoughts need to feed off identification and something hooking into them. If that gets cut off, their life source gets cut off, they just disappear from consciousness and they evaporate. So you've got a mixture of feelings and thoughts. So if you, the more you do it, the more easy it is to just collapse the uh, craving and thoughts. So actually what you've got is two objects. Let's say you see it, there's a tree, um, I'll make it easy. There's a tree and a car on the street. Can you be the observer of both of them simultaneously? Yes. You're not, you're not like having a problem that you're the car or the tree. So you can observe them both with detached observing. So the feeling of craving in the, in the body and the thoughts in the head, you can be the observer of both simultaneously and they'll both disappear at the same time. If you go to the observer of the craving, it will disappear. If you go to the observer of the thoughts, you do one after the other and you can collapse them. The other thing with the observer is you have to remember to do it and apply it. If you don't, um, then, um, but in a pure observer, if you get to the pure observer, you know, it will decimate your, your food addiction in a split second and keep doing it and, and just use that as a clearing tool. If you're able to do it once, keep doing it, pray for willingness to do it anytime you get a craving or a thought and you, you will transcend that addiction using just that. Yeah, it is that powerful if you can do it. Okay, so I'm going to stop.